coming. You're uh, all wonderful to take carve out this hour today. I know some people wanted to be here, but they couldn't because uh, of the time it was. Um, so I am going to record this, and um, that's why I wanted you to turn off your videos, just in case you didn't want to be broadcasted <laughs> across the world or wherever. Anyways, so um, I'm really excited to be presenting this. It's uh, taken a while to put this together, but I'm really happy with uh, how it's turned out. And we all know, we've all heard where we're starting from. And um, I really hope that for those who are interested in painting, that this can help you a little bit on your journey and help you to be the best painter that you can be. So I just want to give you a little bit of uh, where we're going to go and what we're going to cover. We're going to look at some roadblocks that may be in the way of you reaching your painting goals and how you can solve them. So there's lots of good stuff to come. So here's the overview. We're going to be diving into a deeper discovery of your unique painting style. And then we're going to talk about some painting progress blockers. And then the five biggest mistakes beginner painters make. And then we want to discuss how we can create momentum in our painting journey. So sound good? All right, so I've actually been a professional artist, full-time artist for the last 11 years. I've showed my work in galleries in different countries, in Kuwait, in Indonesia, in Canada, but I've also taught in those, in those countries as well. And I just, some of you may not know that I finished a postgraduate diploma in an awesome program in Halliburton School of the Arts up in Halliburton in Ontario. And that was uh, two summers ago. Absolutely loved it. Excellent program. Um, it really, really helped me as an artist give direction. And I'm hoping that in some way this webinar can help you with your direction and, and where you want to go in painting. So some of you said that you had taken the, the quiz online. What happens when people took this quiz is that they were given a report that went in and, and put them in three different categories. And so I'm going to just quickly go over the results. And for those who haven't taken the quiz, you can figure out which category you probably would have fit into. The first category was authentic. And what that meant was that you prefer painting in a realistic style that is representational of what you see in the world around you. So you like to paint what you see. You see a tree, you want to paint the tree. And you prefer to paint objects that you can identify, like a person, place, or thing. So it could be a still life, it could be a person, it could be a tree, it could be a landscape, but it's something that you actually see, physically see, and you're painting that, and you want it to look like what you're seeing. So a lot of beginning artists start out kind of in this style. Here's an example here. This is a watercolor, and this would fit into that category. So in that larger category, there are other things like realism or naturalism or photorealism. And in, in photorealism, you try and make it look like a photograph, like even better than a photograph. So it's so detailed, and it's usually the contrasts are way stronger than what you would see in real life. But that, those are kinds of painting styles that would fit into the authentic bucket. Um, here's one of my paintings. I think you can see that behind me uh, in my, if you, can, if you can see me in the little uh, screen there, that one's there behind me. So this one, even though it's quite uh, actually a little bit 3D, it's got some uh, birch bark on it, little birch bark um, uh, curls on it. So even though it is not just a regular flat painting, it is realism because I'm trying to create a birch bark looking painting. So that's, that's realism. And this, this style does require a lot of practicing of technical skills and those are developed and practiced over time. And they do usually require quite a bit of patience and instruction in a step-by-step -step method. So there is a way that you actually do uh, realism. You know, you do your background first and you build your way forward. And so there's their step-by-step uh, methods that go with painting a realistic style. The second category I called emotive. And what this means is that you prefer painting in a style that is more concerned with capturing your emotional interpretation of what you see around you rather than its exact representation. So it would be starting out with something that exists, but you're, you're actually abstracting what you see, but you still can tell what it is. So that would be what I call emotive. So here's one that I did, and this one is a, a landscape. I think most of you <laughs> would, would pick that up, that it's a landscape. I'm, and you know, while I was trying to paint a landscape with stormy clouds, I wasn't really trying to make it totally realistic. 
and I wanted to convey emotion or I just pouring out what I felt on the day. And so that would be a more of a emotive style of painting, which actually is very different than what you saw in my last painting in the realism. So I do go back and forth. And oftentimes beginning artists will start out wanting to paint in realism, but once you learn the steps that you want to branch out. So oftentimes people don't start at the emotive level. They need to learn the basic skills and techniques in the beginning until they get those down and then they usually branch out a little bit. There are some that would start right in the emotive, um, has a lot to do with your personality and your working style and we'll talk more about that later. But um, yeah, it's more about com um, conveying emotion. So here's another one here. You can tell it's people probably in the tropics maybe because of the colors, but emotive painters paint what they feel. And while the subject is usually identifiable, the style often has loose brushwork and is painted quickly with lots of expression and a little bit of finesse thrown in. So you can see the brush strokes there that it's, it's not meticulously, like it's more free and they are actually abstracting reality. And uh, this still requires technical skill though. You still need to understand about color mixing. You need to understand principles of design and composition. Um, they also need to have a looseness and a confidence with each brush stroke, otherwise it just seems a little bit stiff. So the, ne the third style was the free spirited style. And this is that you prefer painting in a style that is more concerned about getting your inner world of the artist out on the canvas rather than painting anything that's seen. So a lot of the modern abstracts you see now are like that and free spirited painters paint what they feel, communicating this through just line, form, color, composition, value, contrast, and, and all the other principles of design. So here's one, I think you can see that behind me as well. Um, this is one very different than what I've done before, as you see with the emotive and the, and the authentic one I did. Um, this is often called non-objective as well, non-representational, non-objective, the broader category, they'll call it all abstract. And what this means is that you didn't start from an existing object, therefore it, I like, I prefer to call it non-objective. So there was no objective that you were trying to achieve. So in other words, you start just maybe with, I'm gonna put texture or I'm gonna put color. You don't really know how it's gonna end up. And that's the scary part for some people. And that's also the fun part for some people. And oftentimes um, people have been painting for a while before they get to this style. So this took me, you know, 20 years before I started to do stuff like this and feeling free to do that. So this one was um, called in my happy series. I did a whole series of about 15 of these paintings, very large. So that was one of the things I was doing scale. Um, but it was based on being happy. So I called it my happy series. So I don't know about you, but when I look at this, um, I just get happy. <laughs> Maybe you don't get happy, but I get happy when I look at this. So uh, free spirited people, they, uh, it can be a, like a color field. So it's just color and it's focusing on color. It could be about texture. It could be geometric design. You think of a Jackson Pollock where he just throws paint at a canvas. And, and you would say, well, yeah, that doesn't take any skill or, um, but, but it does take a lot of, there's different things that come into play with this. And it is actually not as easy as it looks. In fact, the painting I just showed you um, is quite complicated in getting your balance right, getting your colors right, getting your push and pull, um, you know, having repetition and getting variation and not copying anybody else, but coming up with something that's totally original. It, it is very, very challenging. So copying somebody, you like their colors, you can kind of copy that design, but actually coming up with something that hasn't been created before that is actually pleasing and you like, and is something entirely different is, is very, very tough. So oftentimes in this, you will end up with a painted mess if you don't understand things like depth and value and color and composition, you still need to have some of those more um, technical skills in your arsenal to be able to create a non-objective that actually looks good. So um, there are some, some things in there that make it challenging. So, oh, thank you. Barb says she likes my happy style. <laughs> so um, it, if you can type in the chat, which style did you come out with and was it accurate? So, so tell me, was it emotive, authentic, or free-spirited? And yes 
or no, it, it, you know, you don't feel that that's who, who you were. So those who took the quiz, type in the chat what you were, free-spirited, emotive, or authentic, and tell me, is it, was it accurate or no? Yes or no? And Jan says she, she thinks she's authentic, but she'd like to move to emotive. And that's a natural progression to do that. And Pat said she came out as abstract reality. Okay, great. And uh, Esperanza says so accurate. Great. <laughs> I'm glad to know that it's, it's, it, uh, it's working at least um, a few times. So that's great. So um, when we're talking about your, your painting style, what painting style is best for you, it, it ultimately, no one can tell you that but you. So it has to do with your preference. Um, not only your preference, but it has to do with your joy. I mean, who wants to paint if it's going to be stressful? People paint as a hobby because they enjoy it, because it gives them joy. It, it's, uh, it's relaxing. There's all kinds of reasons why people paint. They, they feel a sense of accomplishment. Um, however, if the style that you're attempting doesn't make your heart sing, it could be actually stealing and robbing you of your joy if you haven't found your best painting style and the one that's just right for you. And that's influenced by a number of factors we're just gonna quickly go over. So it is, it has to do with your preference. It, it really, you're gonna pursue something that you really want, that you're really attracted to. So it does have to do with preference. However, you could get that amazing, like, oh, I love that by looking at someone else's work. And um, you may really want to paint that way, but if you don't have the skills or the patience uh, to paint in that kind of style, it, it could be a real joy stealer. And if you don't have the proper skills and training or foundation to paint that way, then you're finally, your final outcome could be a lot less than desired. So it's not all about preference. It, it has other things to do. And one of them is your choice of medium as well. So you're, your choice of medium has its own challenge and benefits. So it's generally considered that oil is the easiest medium for painters to start out in. And then it goes up to acrylic and then it goes to watercolor. And um, for me, I started in watercolor and I went backwards. I'm actually working on oil now. <laughs> so, but, but that journey for me has caused me to actually create watercolor-like things in acrylic. And it's also changed the way I approach oil because I started from watercolor. Uh, so your choice of medium has a big influence on your journey. And let's look at why that is. So oils have a really slow drying time, um, which is great for mixing. You can mix and mix. You can mix for days. You can mix for weeks almost. Uh, it makes blending very easy. So you can get really, really smooth things. It's fun with the palette knife. Um, however, because it is slow drying, um, it, it takes a long time for it to dry. If you want to do layers or you want to frame it, um, some of the colors like titanium white can take up to two years to finally cure. Um, they all don't take that long, but they do take a long time. So that is a problem. Um, they can, they have toxic fumes. It is, it is toxic, the smell of it and especially the um, additives that you use, so the mineral spirits. And even if you buy an odorless mineral spirit, uh, don't be fooled into thinking that that's not toxic. It's toxic, the so same toxic, toxicity, you just don't smell it. So I, I didn't realize that and I was using it and had it open and I couldn't figure out why I was getting dizzy and wanting to fall over. And that's you know one of the challenges of working with that. So it can be harmful to your health, um, there are ways of doing, which I'll talk about later, oil and cold wax, which makes the oil dry quicker and uh, you still have to have good ventilation and you get a little bit of a different finish. It's a little bit more matte than that nice sheen that oil gives you. Oil gives you a beautiful sheen that is difficult if, you know, to totally imitate that with an acrylic. So acrylics, they're quicker drying time. Um, they are not as expensive as as oils um, and they have all kinds of things you can add to them make them thicker make them thinner um, they have all these viscosities which is the thickness or thinness of of the paint itself so you can do all kinds of different techniques blending is more difficult um, but there are additives that you can buy to slow down the drying time and uh, make your blending um, you know easier 
So some of you may not be aware if you have been using acrylics that there are acrylics out there called open acrylics. Uh, they're a product by Golden and they increase the drying time of acrylics uh, for as much as two hours. So you do have some blending possibilities there. When you work with those, you want to be aware, however, that um, it doesn't work well in thick applications. You can't really use a pellet knife with them. And they can be recharged because they do take longer to dry and set up and lift it up if they wet before their first layer is dry. So with regular uh, acrylics, that's not gonna happen. You're, you're, it's gonna dry in about 15 minutes. You can easily put on other layers and it won't lift up. However, how I use these open acrylics is that on my first underpainting layer I do, I put down a quick, uh, quick drying acrylic, and then on my second layer, I open, use the open acrylics and blend with them, and then just leave it. So that's how I use those particular types of paint. Now watercolor has a beautiful transparency and layers that uh, people don't realize it's, it's a beautiful reflection. There's something happening uh, physically with your eyes and the cones in your eyes when you look through those layers and the light bounces off the white of the paper and bounces back to your eye. So there is this vibration that's happening and people don't always know why they like watercolor so much, um, but that's a part of it. There is physically something that's happening when you look at a real watercolor. Um, you can paint them quite quickly. Um, they're, they're less expensive to buy. The, the upstart is much less expensive than say acrylic. The most expensive is the oil. They're very easy to transport. You can take a little kit like this and a little pad and you can go anywhere and paint anywhere. So that's nice. However, it is a challenging medium if you don't have the proper steps because it is transparent. So when you make a mistake, it's, it's a little more difficult to repair those mistakes. And once you've lost the white of the paper, it's very difficult to get that beautiful glow back. And you do have to control a lot of your things. You have to control your water and your paint and your environment um, to actually get the results you want. And it does take practice to learn the balance of those things. You also have to pre-plan in a watercolor where you're gonna leave your whites. And um, so you have to think ahead. So it's a different process of thinking than, than the others. If you want to change your mind midstream, it's a little diff more difficult with watercolor, but not impossible, as Pat will probably tell you, because I've, I've taught her um, the way of starting and building and learning those steps to create uh, good watercolors. So another factor is your working style preferences. So what, what brings you joy? So you might be a fast and furious person. You love to just get it on there fast, throw paint on there. Maybe you're not going to want to do photorealism. <laughs> Even though you might like it, it requires a lot of patience and tedious work. And if your working style is fast and furious, you probably do better with the non-objective or the emotive, um, where you can pull off something really quick. A watercolor works great too with that. If you want to do fast and spontaneous, that works well as well. You need some patience and focus if you want to do the realism and you need the ability to stick to the job. And if you find enjoyment in that, then that's, that's great as well to pursue that sort. So those things influence your choice in, in your painting style. Finally, the one last thing I wanna cover is um, your skill level. So very rarely will you achieve amazing results in your painting without some sort of instruction, whether that would be a book or a video or a teacher or a class or whatever. We all need, to learn the painting skills. And I think it's fair to say that none of us are born with it. There are some people who argue with that, but we don't come out of the womb with a paintbrush in our hand and just innately know how to do it. What I think is more fair to say is that some of us are born with an innate ability or to um, pursue what we really wanna pursue and, and, and stick to it and, and learn it. And that more the ability, it just doesn't come out of the blue. Um, I think we're born with an aptitude to stay focused on the thing that we want to pursue, that that's more the talent area. Some people find it easier, some people find it harder, but if you're willing to stay focused on something and to pursue it until you master it, I think everyone is talented. Everyone has the talent they need to complete, you know, the painting they want to or desire. But there are a number of things that stop us from progressing on our painting journey. And I'm gonna call those painting progress blockers. The first one is lack of know-how. So this is the number one response of challenges. You don't know what next steps to take to get the results to go where you wanna go. 
And um, on the quiz, I took a survey of what were some of the biggest challenges, and this came up as the top one. And um, I've talked to a number of my a number of students, and they've said that they took a class or a course, and the teacher didn't give them the attention they wanted, or they didn't have the direction they needed. They had the wrong supplies, or they didn't have the right supplies. They needed more instruction. They didn't get their questions answered, and so they got discouraged, and they just said, "Forget it. I'm not. I'm not doing this." Or maybe you followed all the steps, but it didn't look anything like the person, the instructors. <laughs> it left you totally frustrated because you didn't have the know-how how to get to where you wanted to go. The second one was a lack of direction. So you may have some basic skills down, but you don't know how to improve or how to get better. And uh, there's lots of free stuff on the internet and it can be overwhelming because it's, it's like here and there and scattered and you know, you haven't learned all the steps that go underneath there. So you start and you jump in in the middle of these demonstrations, but you don't understand all the things that went into the foundation of that painting or into developing the skills that are needed to produce that. And so it can be really, really frustrating. And, and for me, when I started painting and I want to know, just tell me about composition. Like I want to learn about composition. Where do you find out how to learn about composition? And uh, sometimes those are things are hard to find. And there's a lot to learn out there about creating art. And it seems the more you learn, the more you discover you don't know. And it's very easy to get discouraged when you look at someone else's work and think, I'll never be able to paint like that. And yeah, I've been painting for most of my life and I still think that. <laughs> I, I mean, I have to beat the, the, the voices in my head that says, I'm a terrible artist. And it's, it's like, no, you're not. You're not a terrible artist. You're on a journey to becoming a great artist if you want to. And you can be inspired by other people, but you have to um, recalibrate your thinking to measure your journey from where you are and where you've come from. And that gives you a change in perspective and helps encourage you. And that leads me to the next blocker, which is a lack of confidence. So putting your painting up, framing it, putting it in the wall, letting other people see your painting is like putting your heart and soul out there for others to judge whether it's good or not. It, it's like hoping things like um, nobody thinks your baby's ugly, or at least they won't say that you have an ugly baby. Um, you know, it's your baby. No matter how ugly other, other people think it is, it's your baby. You love it. <laughs> I mean, you 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 painted it and you created everything you like to put into it and so um, some people may wonder well my mom likes it my mom thinks it's great how come nobody else does <laughs> so it's really important to get some honest feedback from somebody who knows to help you build some confidence so great it's great mom mom loves all my paintings um, but it's great to have somebody who is a painter to be able to say, yeah, that's great, or this can be improved upon here, or your perspective is off, and uh, this could be better if you do like that. That's, those things are the things that help build your confidence because you actually start um, working towards a better, a better painting. You don't do that unless you understand what makes a better painting, and then you can grow in your confidence. The next one is uh, lack of motivation. And there is no silver bullet when it comes to painting. If someone says it's easy and you know easy steps, they're deluded, um, especially if you're trying to do it on your own. It's like a techie guy who sleeps with his computer and he says it's easy to build a website. It's like, yeah, if you know how to do it. <laughs> but if you don't, it can be really frustrating. And the way we get motivated is by setting a course of action that has some checks and balances, some deadlines perhaps, some feedback, and lots and lots of wins. You need those wins to keep going, otherwise it's really discouraging. And creating a painting that shows improvement that you love or even like motivates you to press on. Even better, ever been on a, a diet where you, you don't lose one pound and you are following your diet religiously for at least two days? It's, it's like really discouraging. <laughs> okay, maybe it was a week. We, we actually need to see those pounds fall off to keep us motivated to keep going. Um, yeah, the next one, lack of perseverance. So it takes repeated practice to learn and develop new skills, especially in painting. And if some ways, if you don't keep it up, you lose some of it, that, of what you learn, you forget. 
uh, this is especially true in watercolor because it is a timing thing and a confidence thing. And you, it's almost like you lose your rhythm. Um, I found that even with cooking because in Indonesia, I had a cook. And when I came back to cooking, it was like, oh my goodness, I kept on burning myself. It's like I lost the rhythm of how you do and how you get everything on the table. Um, so it is like a little bit like that with painting when you haven't done it for a long time. You, you kind of have to rewind a bit. So uh, setting aside time to learn a new hobby as an adult is, is challenging. I think back as a child, I took accordion lessons and piano lessons and voice lessons and I practiced every day, 50 minutes to an hour and an hour and a half sometimes. Um, I just did that religiously. I had 10 years of taking voice. But fast forward to my 40s and I wanted to learn the flute. So my husband, my dear husband, bought me a flute. And uh, man, that was hard, carving out 15 minutes a day. Um, it, it is, as an adult, that is really, really hard. And I'll talk more about my flute journey a little bit later. So removing the blockers. So tell me, which was, which was your greatest, which is your greatest blocker? Type it in the chat. Esperanza says, I get discouraged when painting doesn't look like I plan and get guidance, right? Lack of confidence leads to forgetting what I learned or practice and getting instructions. So afraid I'll mess everything up, right? There's a lot of confidence in just jumping in and trying. So another thing, what is your greatest joy stealer when it comes to your painting? What steals your joy the most? Perfectionism, yes. Yes, I am a perfectionist as well. And um, yes, yeah, one of the things I have found, and it's a journey, is that when I don't care anymore, is I get a painting I just hate. It's like, oh, this is so ugly. I usually put it aside for a while and, and oftentimes I'll go back and go, oh, they're, oh, I do like it. Um, I just need to change a couple things. But sometimes when I have one I just hate, I said, I am just gonna just do something. Those ones turn out to be the best. I actually, cause I do something I wouldn't have done before. I'm, I don't care anymore. I'm not trying to fix something. And so, um, and, and those ones are some of the best ones I have. In fact, those are the ones that get sold sometimes the fastest. People go, just love that. And I actually have one that I've kept and I'm not gonna sell it because it reminds me when you let go of that perfection and so you just have fun and, and you just go out and do something you wouldn't normally do, you get really fun, surprising results. Okay, the next one, the five biggest mistakes artists make. And are you making any of these? So in the chat, as I go through these quickly, tell me, are you making any of these mistakes? The wrong tools. So mistake number one is using the wrong tools. The tendency beginners have is to go cheap. They don't wanna make a big investment. They're not quite sure if they're gonna keep going with this, so they buy the cheapest stuff they can. And it is impossible to create a really great painting in watercolor, especially with really cheap paints. So that is a problem that they're actually setting themselves up for failure by actually having the wrong tools. One of the things they do too is buy the wrong supplies. It's stuff they don't need. It's, it's uh, the wrong type of paint. There's so many different paints, especially in acrylic, um, thicknesses, viscosities, or soft body, heavy body. There's fluids and then there's, and they don't understand how all those works and they buy the wrong thing and it doesn't work properly. Um, they also buy the supplies they don't need like paint colors that they already have you know a lot of paint comes will get you to buy more paint by calling a different name like turquoise but you may have the two colors that they use to mix the, that turquoise and you don't need to buy those extra paints so you end up buying a lot of stuff you don't need have you ever painted the, the walls in your house and you bought a dollar store brush for cutting in between the ceiling and the wall i just i just redid our rooms and you're incredibly frustrated, yeah, that was me, because there's paint all over the ceiling, because it's just a crummy brush and you just can't get it right no matter how hard you try. I'm a painter and I, my, you could come check my ceiling out, it looks so terrible. I am so bad at that, but the biggest thing is I had the wrong brush. My friend Debbie is an excellent cutter in and she wasn't here, but uh, she uses the proper brush. And then you can be confused by all the different pro products and have the wrong ac application. So you're not using them the way they're supposed to be used. You don't have the right technique for the right um, medium. And um, yeah, so wrong tools. Another thing is having a weak foundation. So they don't have the basic skills down before they try more challenging stuff. Like what, you're supposed to do that first? 
so they can watch a thing on YouTube, like I said before, and but it's just you're jumping in kind of in the deep end without having the basic floating devices ready. <laughs> and another one is an unrealistic mindset, mistake number three. Um, it's like kind of wanting to play like Chopin in three easy online lessons. And um, just realistically, it doesn't work like that. There's no silver bullet. Uh, learning to take takes time and practice and um, understanding that it will take time and training to become the best painter you can be sets you up to be more graceful to yourself and to your journey. And you can enjoy the journey and have a little bit more joy. I've taught a lot of beginners and I've always tried to give them immediate wins so that they can keep motivated and keep going which is really really helpful for having a good mindset and most of them are pretty amazed at what they can achieve with the right expression and i'm going to show you a picture of my friend debbie who first time painter here this is my friend debbie and so this is the very first painting she ever painted and this was a step-by-step -step i did with her and um she really really enjoyed that and she has that hanging up on her wall she's really proud of that so this is what i love to give my students to see how excited they can get at actually producing something by learning the techniques and the skill. I mean, um, yeah, it, it's, uh, I see this over and over again with my, my painters. Another mistake is going it on their own. I love this guy's hair. And uh, so they don't know what they don't know and they don't know what to ask for help because they don't know what they don't know. So back to the flute story, um, I bought a flute or my husband gave me this flute and I thought, well, I, I've got all this years of piano, I've got voice, I know how to read music, well, how hard can it be? I'll just buy a book and I'll teach myself how to play flute. Well, I put my flute together, I tried to get a note, I did everything the book said and I tried for weeks, I could not get a sound out of that stupid flute. Finally, I asked my girlfriend, who was a flute player, and I said, I, I don't know why I can't get it, I think I'm doing everything right. Well, she looks at my flute. She goes, well, you got your flute put on backwards. It's like, ah. Oh. Anyways, so I needed some lessons to start out to know what I didn't know. And I didn't pay for lessons. I have not to this day. My flute is sitting in my closet. I haven't picked it up in about eight years. And I don't know how to play it yet. So, yeah, I need to give up on that dream or take some lessons. <laughs> Now, Barb, here's Barb. She's taken a lesson from me and um, she, she really enjoyed um, me helping her along with her process of an artist and working with her where she was along her journey. Uh, the fifth big mistake is that beginner artists make is giving up too soon. They tried it once, it didn't work, and so they quit. And that has a lot to do with the voices in your head. I guess I'm not talented. And, uh, you know, we talked about people they aren't born as artists, they become artists. All the great artists in the past learn from another artist how to do the skills and things. Um, and so I would say they, they, the ones that carry through and stick to it, um, if they have the right steps, those are the things that help them keep, keep on their journey. So how do I keep momentum? Um, you might be saying, painting just isn't right for me and that's fine, but if you wanna keep going on, your painting journey how do you keep momentum so i say just take the plunge there's always a bit of a risk plunging and trying something new it's for me it's questions like what if i fail what if i hate what i paint what if i spend all the money on supplies and it doesn't work so i wanted to ask you you might be thinking some of those questions and i wanted to say what if you try something and it became your next greatest passion and what if you could paint something that you could hang on your wall and feel proud of and happy every day that you looked at it? And what if you started painting to find out that that was just what you needed to bring you refreshing, relaxment, and to find balance in your life? Most of us work uh, in, in our jobs on the left side of our brain. It's working with words, computers, meetings, figuring, and that creative side where you have to go deep down into your creative right side of the brain, the, the, the side of the brain where you lose track of time because you're just so engrossed in it, that's the part that refreshes and balances your brain thinking. And that's what many people have said that when they do painting, it does make them feel very relaxed, unless you're so stressed because you've got the wrong medium and you're losing your joy. <laughs> so investing in your future is pursuing your dreams as an investment in your, in not only in your present, but also in your future. It ups the joys and in some cases makes the unbearable bearable. Um, 
Pat, I had some people in Kuwait. Uh, there weren't a lot of options when we lived in Kuwait and I had water class, watercolor classes there. And I had a number of students say, if it wasn't for their painting class, they, living in Kuwait would have been just unbearable for them. So they were away from their family and stuff. And so it was really great to see how a hobby like that could really help them uh, deal with life. <laughs> the hard knocks of Kuwait. It's pretty hard to stay motivated on your own. Having a group or having some kind of system or accountability helps push us towards straight, staying on track. And, and having an end goal really helps us set boundaries and stay focused on it until it's done. And a group really, really helps when you're meeting with a group. Well, we can't really meet with a group right now, but uh, there are ways we can get around some of that. Uh, it, when you're in a group, you're not as alone. And uh, it helps to see other people struggling with the same things you're struggling with and also to be inspired um, by other people. And, it, and no more, uh, more important than now when we're all so isolated with COVID that um, it, it's great to be able to share our struggles and know we're not alone, even though we are alone in our houses. So I think it's a really great thing right now to be able to be in a group of like-minded people who are on a journey together. Um, really good for sharing inspirations. Um, I've done lots of classes where I'm in groups and I, I end up loving things that other people are doing that I'm seeing, trying some of those things and growing as an artist because of being in the group. You also get some really good feedback and encouragement, especially even in a group together where everyone's in the same boat. People are generally a lot kinder than if you were to put it up on Facebook and say, what do you think of my baby? You're gonna have people who say your baby's ugly. <laughs> Yes, they're not your friends, but also you're all learning stuff together. And uh, that's why I, I created uh, Painting Pathways, is which I've been, the thing I've been working on. So I just want to quickly tell you a little bit about that right now. I am really passionate about teaching art, and I love to pass along that passion to others, especially beginner painters. And I love it when they catch that spark of joy that says, ooh, look at those colors, or oh, cool, see how they blend together. Oh, I love those clouds. Who knew they were so easy? And uh, I wanted to create a, that safe place for students to get honest, to have a group, um, to get informed feedback on their work, and to get really clear steps on, on how to follow a painting journey where they can achieve success. And I realized that most of my students had no idea where to go next to or, or what project they should be embarking on to really actually grow their ability as a painter and their skill. And so I wanted to teach my students everything I wished my teachers had taught me in the beginning, especially with watercolor. I, I had a great um, a teacher, watercolor teacher, who was a great painter, but she was not a great instructor. And so I did not, I, I learned the hard way, even though I was taking lessons, because she didn't know how to give me the step by step. She was, we were all just jumping in at the deep end. And I started painting watercolor the same way I would have done acrylic, and uh, I did not understand those steps. So I thought, that's what I want to give my students. And I created, while I was in Kuwait, a step-by-step -step program that I worked tried and true with a lot of students that really, really helped them uh, do watercolor. So I, I love to share those uh, tricks of the trade. I give it all to them so that they can have success and avoid the frustration that I had. This Watercolor for Beginners is a four module course. I've just finished, spent the last four months working on module one. I give you feedback, you can ask questions. We have live group calls, kind of like what we're doing right now. where We can talk to each other, um, show each other techniques, that sort of thing. Um, and it, it really builds on those foundational skills for success. There's also a seven day money back guarantee for those who aren't quite sure if they want to commit to all of those four um, modules. So in the first module for watercolor, these are the things that we'll be talking about, the color wheel, color mixing, color harmony. And well, this kind of seems like, you know, I have to learn math or you know, no, these things are really, really important especially in watercolor, to understand these things because you layer transparent layers. And if you don't understand what color harmony and temperature is, you will create mud, guaranteed. So um, in the course, we'll complete two finished paintings. We'll have all kinds of exercises. It has live video demonstrations of everything you need to know. And it, it creates a really great foundational path. So these are some of the things, Pat, you can verify to these. There's three stages of wet. So if you're debating on whether or not um, you have these basic steps, there's the three consistencies of paint that really help you know um, how wet your paint needs to be, how much water, how much paint, 
And then I cover these basic techniques of a graded wash, lifting, layering, wet and wet, applying and lifting masking fluid, how to stretch your paper, and drawing cheats. So lots of good stuff in there. So Pat, do you have any comments about what you learned in those years with me, with that whole process, that step-by-step -step that we did? Because that's where I actually developed this whole thing for the online course, is through those classes that we taught in Kuwait. Oh, basically everything, because I don't, I didn't have any, any experience at all with watercolor. Right. So anything from your, I love your drawing cheat technique. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because sometimes I have problems with my dimensions and, and you know, this uh, drawing. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And also all the techniques, I love the web techniques that you showed us. Right, right. But we kind of built on those techniques, didn't we? You started at the beginning and it was kind of cool that um, people who had been on the journey a little bit longer, what was really challenging in the class was actually teaching all the different levels at the same time. <laughs> yes. But you'd have people that have been with me a little bit longer and people are going, oh, why do I have to do this or whatever? And they're all going, you need to because there, there's a reason why. <laughs> and all that. You, know, you need to do that step because that step you know, will help you further along. And, and it was funny how my, my students have been with me longer goes, yes, yes, yes you need to do because they all kind of follow this consistent step so that was kind of cool so this is acrylic ink very cool I did it in a watercolor style so it does give you some different options you don't have to frame this behind glass necessarily this is on paper now this is not part of the um, one where you get feedback and can ask questions this is a self-guided one where you just download it or you work on the class acrylic inks are very different than fluids and just even let me know in the chat would you be interested in in having some information about all the differences between the viscosities of acrylic and all the things that you can do with uh, gels and inks and paste and fluids and high flow so this deals with fluids and high flow inks and I give you everything you need to know there. So this is one of, um, this is how to paint a lily. This is my wet and wet that Pat was talking about. And this is very easy. This, this is what is included in the um, first beginning module. It's one of like maybe eight different exercises. So you can buy this separately. You don't come with the feedback or anything. It's just a paint on your own type thing, but um, you can buy that through the paintingpathways.com. There are video demonstrations of every project that I do in module one, and there will be live calls like this. The course itself is a week long intensive, the same amount of information. And I've taken these and they cost more than a thousand dollars when you start to work on transportation, accommodation, when you have to go to the place. I've taken, I've taken so many in Halliburton and it is expensive when you have to do it live like that. So it is really great value with having the instruction, the direction, the live calls and that sort of thing. So you do not need a lot of paint. A lot of paint goes a long way with watercolor. And I talk all about that and everything you need to buy in the watercolor program. Any other questions that you have about anything I presented today? I have a question, Debbie. Okay. I don't want to go into the module one. Can we register for the next module? Yes, I can definitely let you know when module two, three, and four is up. The module one is great. Um, we don't know what we don't know and so it's really good if you are struggling you don't have those basic techniques down it is a really great place to start but if you do have some of those techniques down um, we're going to get into more depth in module two and three and four on composition so how do you create a landscape you know I've got all kinds of stuff to share on that so you get a little bit deeper both on principles of design techniques as well as technique watercolor techniques so it's more than just painting and watercolor mm -hmm. of course i'm going to get some acrylic ones up too for those who are interested in acrylic i answer a lot of questions on the website it's it's paintingpathways.com and that will take you to my education site i also have a website if you haven't seen that i'm sure most of you have seen that at debbyreeve.com i am so happy to see that the first uh, painting that barb did it looks awesome yeah it, it seems more than the beginners like are you sure it's the beginners <laughs> yeah that, that was debbie yeah that was debbie. I, i'm pretty debbie. sure that's the first time she ever painted and that was um yeah step by step acrylic so yeah that was kind of cool that's yeah, encouraging I try, I try in my painting i found to try and create winds the best way 
we can. That's what encourages people to keep going, continuing when you can have small wins. So, well, that's a big mm. thing. <laughs> if you like it, you want to put it on your wall. I tell everyone there it's a, when you paint, it's the joy of painting. There's a, there's no lose. It's a win-win all around. If you like your painting, it's a total success. You put it on your wall. If you don't like your painting, you've got a white elephant gift to give to someone you don't like at Christmas. So I just, just, just you still enjoy painting it. So you win all the way around. Yeah, great. Thank you, Debbie. Okay, thank you, thank you all. Mark. And we'll end. You're and, uh, thank you so much for joining me. Bye.